You guys, there's something that has been bothering me for a while now. And by a while, I mean like a few years. Basically, since I started having kids, but I think in the past, let's say, couple of months, maybe like past, you know, a couple of months, like one year, it has bothered me even more, okay? And that is about the health and wellness and the future health and wellness of our kids. Most people who watch me were are all we are mostly women, but many of us have kids. And you know, I like to bring topics that affect us as mothers, as women, as human beings. I like to bring such topics here so that we can discuss it. And you know, I give you guys my ideas, my thoughts and stuff like that, my opinions. And then you guys will give me yours in return and you know, work some things out. I've been able to get so many useful information and useful suggestions from people here by bringing topics like this to you guys so yeah let's talk about it and that is about yeah the health and future of our kids you guys i didn't make any notes or anything so if i'm rambling just take it like that this is sister to sister mother to mother you know girlfriend to girlfriend auntie to auntie i want us to talk about our kids you guys i have been so bothered by this in the past few months because i think even moving to this country made it worse for me but you guys do we have healthy kids are kids actually healthy i'm not even talking about their weights right now because i mean a child being overweight is a very obvious indicator that something is wrong a child is not eating right or that child is not healthy right that's an obvious indicator not just for children but for even for adults okay even for women like us you know women like us <laughs> buxom women like us it's it's an outward indication that you're not healthy let's forget all those excuses of oh i don't even eat but i still gain weight it's a lie if you were in you know in slavery or something <laughs> if they lock you up in the room for one week and just give you only water to drink just one week you're going to become slimmer so obviously it is what you're eating yes there are indicators or there are things that make it worse for certain people so some people have a lower metabolism rate some people have some you know thyroid issues or whatever health issues that makes it difficult for them to lose weight as much as a regular person however it doesn't mean that you're not going to be able to lose weight if you do the right things okay it just means that you have to put in more effort you say oh my hair doesn't grow long so you just leave your hair anyhow no you know you put in more effort maybe you put you use more products than the regular person but to achieve healthy long hair you have to put in the effort so the same thing with your health yes you might put in more effort than regular person some people can eat a whole loaf of bread and they still remain the way they are you you eat two slices and you add weight so what do you do you either cut out bread or you eat only one slice or half a slice or whatever anyway you guys get the point so when it comes to even children when i see a child who is overweight it is just an indicator that that child is not eating the right thing even if the child has a health thyroid from birth issue whatever that makes that child overweight it still shows that you know you're not even treating the child right so is it that the child is not eating the right things or the child is not getting the proper health care that they need to you know solve the issue anyway i'm not even here to talk about you know children being overweight i'm talking about just generally the health of our kids i feel like so many kids are being put on the track for so many future diseases a lot of things that we struggle with as adults now it is because of what we we are fed as children or what we ate growing up especially in this generation in fact i've had this conversation with many people so if you're my friend i'm sure this is not a new topic to you right one thing i always tell myself i always say is that growing up i didn't have access to juices to chocolate to sweets to biscuits to all those things i didn't have the kind of access that my kids have now to eat okay so growing up you know we used to eat i mean my mom even used to bake she used to bake cakes bread chin chin you know my mom used to bake a lot not even for commercial use. Okay, she did some commercial use, right? But for just for regular house snacking, she used to bake all those things. But it wasn't an everyday thing. It wasn't even an every month thing. Maybe around your birthday, she can bake cake and bake chin chin. But it wasn't an every day occurrence thing, right? But now, if you want to be eating cakes every day, in fact, growing up, we don't used to see cakes anyhow now, except all those local, maybe cupcake or what they call them that they used to sell them. But it wasn't even a common thing. But now, if you want to eat cakes every single day, like you want to eat decadent chocolate, uh, 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 whatever, whatever filled cakes, you can get them every. In fact, if you want wedding size cake today, you can get it just on a whim, right? 
So, I'm like, we didn't have this kind of access. I'm talking about, you know, juice. I don't know how it became normal that we give children juice every single day to drink. When I was growing up, it wasn't a normal thing to be taking juice. Maybe because I wasn't from, you know, that kind of home, right? Maybe in some richer homes, maybe they used to do it. But I don't, it wasn't even a thing to be taking juice every single day. When we entered secondary school, eh, and we could afford, you know, buying drinks for lunch, eh, maybe at that point. But trust me, the amount of juice some children drink on a single day is much more than we used to drink during our lunch break in secondary school or even in uni, right? So I've noticed that our kids these days, you know, a child is inconvenient, a child is not happy, give the child biscuits, give the child snack, give the child this. We didn't have this much access to such foods. We we're not giving it like that. It's not like they didn't exist. They existed, but we we're not eating them like that. And even when we were growing up, if you see children that used to eat things like that, they were always, you know, overweight. You could tell somehow, okay, for the most part, not all of them, but you could tell that, ah, this child, this child, how you knew children that came from rich homes growing up was because they were usually chubby, which is, I mean, I'm not here to come and, you know, castigate you. So please, if you're watching this video, don't feel guilty if you have an overweight child. I actually have a child that is overweight, okay? So don't come and start feeling like, oh, I'm coming here to talk about you guys i'm talking about all of us all of us but all of us follow joy right because i mean i was doing this even growing up i remember when i had cora right so this is where some part of regret starts to set in with me right i remember when i had cora in my house there we didn't used to have like juices and stuff and i was mostly with her alone i didn't have even help so she was eating aside her cereal and milk which she ate for a very long time because she was very very picky I'll come to that, right? I'll come to that cereal and milk that she ate for almost two years. It was bad, you guys. It was, I always tell people that I don't like telling that story because I used to feel ashamed of myself. Like then, <laughs> then when I carry my when I carry Cora to my friend's house and she's like, oh, everybody come and eat. You know, her kids will go to sit down and eat maybe proper herbal or something. My own child doesn't eat herbal. She will carry her milk. In fact, at some point, I used to dissolve cereal inside bottle for her because feeding her with spoon was a problem. So I'll just dissolve the cereal with the milk inside bottle, open the bottle, the the nipple of the bottle, open it very well, and she'll just be sucking the cereal out of it. Okay, like yeah, it, yeah, it got that bad. But then again, it's because I didn't have help. In fact, I, I think anyway, I'm debating now. But I wish if I had had if I had had help then, things would have been easier for us because i noticed that when i started having help i had i started having i got my first help after eva was born right and then when the help tries to feed cora she will accept and she will eat but when it's me she'll be doing face anyhow she'll refuse to eat okay so if i had had help initially i feel like she won't have been doing that rubbish of you try to feed her with spoon she's crying vomiting like it was bad <laughs> you try to give her eba she will cry vomit yeah hey, fall on the floor and i'll be like will i leave my child hungry They'll just make cereal for her I remember then my husband would be like just make cereal for her what's the point why are you fighting i mean i'll be like no why would she at this age be eating only cereal you know i'll be talking but do you want the child to starve? You give the child what the child wants to eat, okay? So, I mean, it got better after a while. When she started going to daycare, like she started going to school, and you know, things got better. She started eating in school only. Like, it got to a point where in school, anything I give her to eat in school, she will eat it. But when we come back home, we'll start fighting. So, what I was doing then was if you see the lunch I used to pack for this girl, eh, I must put egg, I must put fish, I must put meat, I must put beans, I must put, you know, healthy food for her. Knowing that eh, it is very well in the school. When you come back, we'll be doing our cereal nonsense, cereal and pap nonsense. In fact, she wasn't taking pap so much at some point, just cereal. Eh, Gaba cereal, oh my goodness. Gaba cereal, I used, I bought a lot of that Gaba. Like, if I could keep all the containers, I can build house with the containers. <laughs> it's that bad. Anyway. So, um, yeah, so Cora was that kind of child growing up, but she never used to take like juice. Even when we go to friends' houses or, you know, someone does party in school and they put juice in the bag and biscuits, she never used to eat it. She used to eat only her cereal and her milk and normal food when they force her to, or when, not even force her, when they give her in school, normal food she'll eat. And at home sometimes when I try to force her, she'll eat. But, you know, all these biscuits and sweets and all those things, she wasn't taking them. And, you know, we were okay, we were fine. Then, when she now started school, you know, I remember people, the teachers would call me and say, oh, during lunch break, other kids will bring out their snacks and be eating. That is somehow for Cora that she just buy snacks for her. I was like, okay, was she like 
trying to get people get other children's snacks like was she hung was she acting hungry or acting like she wanted to taste their snacks they were like no not really it's not like she really wants it but it's just somehow you know when everybody's is sitting down eating their snacks she'll just be looking that somehow she'll just get snacks for her so then i remember that's why if i think back now i'm like why did i do that rubbish i wish i wish i know now what i knew then okay i mean i wish i knew then what i know now and I said, okay, and I said, buy snacks. So I remember I started from cheese balls. I'll buy cheese balls from her. She'll take it to school. She'll come back with it. She won't eat it. I'll put Ribena for her. She'll take it to school. She'll come back with it sometimes. Sometimes she'll drink it. Sometimes she won't finish it. You know, it started like that. I didn't even realize that at some point it became a norm. Like, we'll give her juice and biscuit to take to school. As in, aside from normal food, and she'll eat everything, finish everything in school. You know, come back home. Then I don't even know when I said now, giving her at home. Like, when she's hungry or she's not even hungry, when she's uh, angry or, you know, she's throwing tantrums. I'm like, what is this? What is this? Oh, yeah, carry juice and take, take juice and drink, right? You guys, I regret doing those things. I regret doing it for my, for my, for all my kids. Because I did it for all of them. Even though for, um, Eva and Sophia, it wasn't that bad because for Cora, I bottle fed Cora for a very long time. Okay, even though it started from breast milk, then when she now turned six months, it was now, you know, um, cereal, what they call the name, formula and cereal, right? But for Eva and Sophia, I breastfed them for the whole six months, and then afterwards, they just transitioned to normal food. It was even way easier for um, Sophia, but even for Eva, it was easy for her to transition to normal food, so she ate more of normal food. In fact, at some point, it was me that was only forcing them to be taking pap with milk because I felt like, okay, oh, you need to have um, milk exercise breastfeeding you need to have milk in your system so i was giving them you know pap and milk but for the most part they were eating regular food right so i actually regret the fact that i was now giving them snacks as well because it has kind of my eyes have kind of been open to the dangers of that because even if your child is not fat your child is not overweight you have conditioned them to see sweet things as you know a sign of love a sign of you know you've basically conditioned them to be addicted to sweet things even if they are slim okay so you see what happens with so many kids is that even when they eat regular food they seem to take juice and biscuits why are you taking juice and biscuits that is just sugary shit <laughs> if you guys follow eddie abru on instagram please go and follow him okay eddie abru he swears a lot but you know the message will be passed across like you will get the message okay why are we giving our children this sugary? And it's even worse in Nigeria. See, let me tell you, let me tell you guys something. I remember when I was in Nigeria, I used to feel like, you guys, like, again, like I said, I'm going to be all over the place, but you guys should just follow me, right? I remember when I was in Nigeria, I used to be like, ah, one of the fears I have with living abroad or coming to stay abroad is their food. All their food is not good. You know, it's full of this and that and, that and this and that, okay? Which is true, by the way, okay? Which is true. Like, if you follow some of this, I follow a lot of them, okay? I follow so many doctors. I don't know why I'm still the way I am, but you know, don't worry, we'll get there. The work is happening internally. <laughs> when, when it starts manifesting physically, you guys will know. But anyway, so I follow so many doctors, like doctors who like to preach about you know eating well eating good eating single ingredient foods so i follow i started following them mostly from when a long time ago actually like when i was trying to get pregnant right so people like dr nick zyrowski i don't know how to say his name dr eric berg um there are, there are a few doctors i follow because they always talk about like Ingre- they talk about the specific ingredients, things to avoid, things to eat, things, supplements to take. So I always follow this doctor. So right from time, I've always known that some foods are actually not good. But I always kind of associated it with an Oibo thing because I was watching Oibo doctors then. I don't know why I just felt like Nigeria was different. <laughs> now that I am now here, I'm just like, see, uh, here is even better. Why do I say that here is better? At least here. Any single food item you are buying, all the ingredients are listed, okay? All the ingredients, including raw chicken. If the chicken is plain raw chicken, they will write plain raw chicken there. And they will tell you the type of chicken. If it's free range, if it's uh, this one, that one, whatever. They tell you what is inside the food. Then you go ahead and open your eyes and buy it. Or maybe close your eyes and buy it. But whatever, the information is there if you decide to check for it, okay? But in Nigeria, where do you see who is is telling you? 
what is in the chicken. It's not go to butcher, they cut it and give you. Who is telling you what's in the chicken? Who is telling you that? <laughs> and I remember I used to think that, oh, at least in Nigeria, you know, we ra- Nigeria, we raise chicken in cages. Here, they used to talk about, oh, they, they don't raise, this This one is not raised in cage, so it's raised in cage. So you now choose the better option. In Nigeria, I never, nobody ever told me the option of this one is raised in cage or not raised in cage. And we raise chicken in cages for the most part, okay? Except you get you go to like smaller families, you know, or in the village, eh? Uh-huh. But even in the village, they still raise chicken in cages, give them all sorts of antibiotics, import their feed. They're not even eating natural foods. That we import their feed. That's why, that's why anytime you know dollar goes up, you, the price of chicken will go up, the price of fish will go up, and the, not even just fish. Well, yes, but the price of eggs will go up ahead. Uh-huh. Actually, eggs, okay, because. You know, we also import chickens, by the way. We also import chickens, and only God knows what those chickens passed through before they got to our table, before they got to our, our, our kitchen or our shops, right? Only God knows. But even the ones that, you know, are raised locally there, they are raised in cages, they are fed with important feed that we don't even know what it is. They are given all sorts of antibiotics which seeps into the, you know, the meat that we eventually eat. Even our cows, all those things, all those, all livestock in Nigeria, they are fed with all sorts that we can't even verify. Staying in this country now made me realize that it's actually worse in Nigeria. In Nigeria, they use, they're using sniper to preserve beans. To pre- You don't even know. In fact, you think you're eating beans, but you're eating... A, a, a insecticide <laughs> flavored beans <laughs> imagine all our dry fish and stuff like that they try to preserve those things with so many chemicals that we don't even know about is it even the regular farming do you know how much pesticides they put on on them um, on on the leafy vegetables okay the leafy vegetables like the lettuces and all those things even the ugu and all of those things do you know how much pesticides they put on those things just so that you know they don't rot or they don't get eaten by pests okay and i'm not just talking about in nigeria again we also have the same thing here abroad but here abroad it is specified so if you that if you want to buy the organic this is organic this is a price if you want to buy the non-organic this is the non-organic and this is the price okay so for me you just i just choose ingredients that i know that okay are less likely to be so affected by whether they are organic or not or by affected by pesticides so things like avocados things like oranges this is the information i got online though so things like avocado oranges things that have really thick um skins you can get away with it okay so that's why sometimes i even tell you that let's say now you're buying non-organic oranges or lemons even if you squeeze the lemon and you eat it there's you should not actually boil the skin and drink the water because you are now you, you get what i mean right so even i've heard about pineapples as well they'll tell you that if it's not organic don't boil the skin because the skin basically protected the fruits from the pesticides but the pesticides are on the skin and you know and all the chemicals so anyway um yeah so so it's worse in nigeria but i'm not even talking about where it's worse i'm talking about generally our kids generally whether in nigeria or abroad are we raising healthy kids? Are we giving them the right foods? Are we giving them the right nutrients? Why do why are so many kids these days diagnosed with so many health issues? Not just physical health issues, mental health issues, um, you know, all those things. Why are why are kids being diagnosed daily with different kinds of issues? Rich, rich? Why? And 90% of all those things, if not more, like the percentage, I'm not sure the percentage, okay, I'm just guessing. But from all my research, not actually active research or like you know passive research <laughs> but even some active research that i've done from what i have seen a lot of problems are caused by the food that we are eating even the so-called healthy food some of them are laced with so many so many chemicals and in fact one that's annoying me in this country though is that's why i'm always ranting i think i, I feel like i'm always ranting about greek yogurt here I want to buy Greek yogurt. At least in Nigeria, you want Greek yogurt, they'll give you Greek yogurt. It just comes Greek yogurt. Bam! I always buy the um, unsweetened Greek yogurt, even in Nigeria. Like, I can buy sweetened ones in a while, but I mostly prefer going for the unsweetened ones. I sweeten it myself. Either I use fruits to sweeten it, or I use honey, or I can use sugar to sweeten it, but I, I'll control how much sweetness is inside the um, Greek yogurt. Because sometimes you buy the sweetened one, you're like, is this yogurt or is this sugar? So the one that annoys me about this country is that you go to buy normal yogurt. You will check the ingredients of the yogurt. Normal yogurt is supposed to be milk and culture. That's what I know yogurt to be because I've always loved yogurt even growing up, okay? Normal yogurt is supposed to be milk and culture. Then maybe they sweeten it with sugar, right? You don't need to have any extra thing. But you go here, you will see stabilizer, you will see gum wanting wanting, you will see uh, uh, um, 
what's this one the high fructose corn syrup you will see all kinds of sweeteners multidextrose this one this de all those uh, i don't even know what their names right you will see them on just just a, a regular cup of yogurt and i'm asking myself why why does my yogurt contain cornstarch these are these are ingredients i have not that somebody told me i have read them by myself i go to buy yogurt especially those small cute yogurts that come in four pack you know four in one six in one or a pack of you know those small small cup yogurts that have strawberry and uh, passion fruit at least some of them here you actually see the fruits inside the yogurt right but don't be fooled by those fruits you are seeing inside the yogurt go and check the ingredients you will see cornstarch cornstarch is something they put a lot in most of their food here why is why why is there cornstarch inside yogurt and mind you cornstarch and all those corn derived foods are actually not good okay because they are the way the corns are farmed and the way the corns are harvested and the way the corns are manipulated in fact the kind of corns to start with most of them are gmo corns because they grow bigger and grow faster so they take those gmo corns they still manipulate it further to get all kinds of things from it so they get the cornstarch they get the 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 um, fructose and the uh, 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 corn syrup and stuff like that that they now use to flavor foods or sweeten foods right and all these things are going into your child's system so i'm not even here to come and scare you guys i'm not here to come and say oh the child should not eat anything again okay because i mean we live in this world except you want to make everything from scratch you want to be a homesteader making everything from scratch growing everything from scratch it is not feasible for it's not even practical for like most of the population like 80 percent of the population how many people can actually grow all their food from scratch and be preserving and prepping and all it's not it's not a, it's not an easy thing to do okay most people have to work and most people have a life <laughs> okay but what quality of life are we having if we're not eating good food and we're not eating healthy food especially for our children because most of us i mean me i'm almost 40 uh, uh, the way i see my life okay i'm almost 40 so i'm not saying that I'm, i shouldn't be healthy but at least i have lived a little okay i've not lived enough oh please i'm not living enough i still have a lot a, a long way to go but at least my i would say that to a large extent my childhood did not set me up for failure to a large extent okay i'm not saying that we didn't have all those things growing up but i'm just saying to a large extent compared to what our kids are eating now my childhood did not set me up for failure so i can kind of guess that okay at least i'm good generally even though health wise i'm not perfect like i need to lose weight i need to sleep more i need to reduce stress in my life i know all those things and you know i'm working towards it right but for the most part if i do all those things i know that i'm good right but what about our kids who we are already setting up for failure so by setting up for failure i mean that if we're not careful god forbid i, re I reject it for you know anybody that's watching this or any child basically it's not something I, I even pray for for any child you know god forbid right but if you're not careful you're setting up your child for a lifelong illness that will now make them dependent on drugs dependent on the same system that as far as i'm concerned tampered with their food to make them unhealthy just because they want to produce more i remember I, I, i'm debating but yesterday i i reposted something about you know johnson and johnson powder that caused cancer like they had to settle it's not three point something billion or how many billions of dollars that they had to settle because a lot of women had ovarian con ovarian cancer by using johnson and johnson powder when they were little okay like their parents used the powder on them and they had ovarian cancer okay and ha that's in abroad where they could track all these things so i'm not talking about the ones in other countries where there was no you know tracking or whatever right if you're a doubting tumbles and you feel like ah I doubt that they really see they are trying to maximize maximize profits okay a lot of these companies they are fo not even a lot what is why is a company there they are com a company is created to make money okay to maximize profits right and when they are trying to maximize profit they can cut all corners possible to be able to maximize profits Okay, I'm talking about even the food industry, the the um, medical, in the, what they call them, the pharmaceutical industries, right? They will cut all kinds of corners to be able to maximize profit. So what will make them cut corners? For instance, I am very sure it is cheaper to use cornstarch to thicken a yogurt base than to make it plain yogurt. In fact, it's even all those things are even cheaper if you, if you check them. If you want to buy like actual good healthy yogurts, they are more expensive than all those colorful nonsense, okay, sugary shits. <laughs> they're more expensive okay so for them to reduce the cost and reduce the price and make people buy more they cut all these corners and add all kinds of 
this thing for the thing to even increase the shelf life of this because the regular yogurt has a very short shelf life like there's sometimes i bought yogurt here and i'll see that oh best before next tomorrow me and my children will not be eating yogurt <laughs> we'll eat yogurt afternoon night the next morning just so like to finish before the best before i'm not saying if it passes the best before you, you can't eat it but you know we try not to allow things pass the best, the best before okay that's because I buy the normal, natural, regular yogurt. But if you want to buy those co colorful yogurts, you'll see expiry dates next year. Why? Why is milk, milk? Why is milk not expiring, you know, anytime soon? What did they add to it to make it not expire? And if it's, if it's not expiring anytime soon and you consume it with all those preservatives inside, what is happening in your gut? What's happening in your system? What's happening in your body? So sometimes you see yourself struggling to, to lose weight. And for me, I always say this thing that, I know why I am the way I am, okay? I know for I know 100% what is causing it. I'm not one of those people that are delusional. I know, like, I know what if I stop eating today, you guys will see me in the next, you know, one month and I'll be looking significantly slimmer. I know. It's just that at this point, I'm kind of addicted to some of those things, okay? Which, you know, I'll get to later. I'm kind of addicted to some of those things. So, as mothers, as people who are in charge of our children's nutrition, even if you're not a mother, as a parent, okay? as a, Not even just mother, as parents, actually. Anybody who is just, you know, you're in charge of your children's nutrition, you are, you know, you're in charge of children, you should be aware of these things to set your children up for a better outcome in life. And now the danger of too much sugar, which is what I wanted to even discuss with, with you guys initially, is that when we're, our kids are younger and we're giving them sweets, we're giving them biscuits, we're giving them all of these things, it is creating a dependence and an addiction that will affect them later on in the future. Not just an addiction to those sugary things, an addiction to food in particular, because trust me, a lot of people are addicted to sugar, but they don't know. Okay, so some people that feel like oh they like alcohol too much is because you are addicted to sugar. Trust me. Some people that are like oh you like dessert a lot, like ah, if it happens, that's that's my own problem. Like. I can eat, I don't even eat so much food, like actual food when it comes to, like if you carry a banana, if you see the Eba eat, <laughs> you guys will laugh. The Eba eat is not more than this man. In fact, it's not even like, it's, I can hold it in my hand, inside my hand like this. I eat more of the soup, right? The rice I eat is just one small plate. If I eat, I can't eat too much rice, I can't eat too much, you know, even bread. Funny enough, at this point in my life, even bread I like a lot, I can't, I can't eat too much bread, right? But the moment I finish eating regular food, I want something sweet to kind of wash it down. <laughs> I don't know if, if some of you have that same addiction, right? Because it's an addiction, whether we like it or not. What are some people doing is ice cream. Some people cannot do without ice cream. Some people cannot do without tea, bread and tea. Like, it sounds basic, but that thing is very fattening. You you can Your own Milo is three spoons of Milo, two spoons of uh, uh, powdered milk, and some people still add sugar on top, right? Forgetting that Milo actually contains a lot of sugar and also milk, right? Some people will add other things, still add milk, still add sugar. So I still have bread, bread and butter, you know, things like that. Some people have different addictions, people that are actually overweight, even the ones that are not overweight, okay? Because the fact that they're not overweight doesn't mean that you're actually healthy. Different addictions, and these addictions are causing a lot of havoc on our lives, and we don't know that it is something as basic as sugar that is causing this. And mind you, some of us got these addictions as adults because you know when we enter secondary school and started buying our lunch and started you know or you invest in eating you know feeding yourself many of us were eating junk because of the convenience we were eating junk so we developed this addiction at old age old age you know compared to the younger ones and many of us are still finding it hard now to actually get over it many of us see uh, one of the most difficult things i've ever gone through in this life is trying to lose weight Meanwhile, I know how to lose weight. I know what I can do to lose weight. I know how easy it will be for me to lose weight. But it's one of the most difficult things I am battling with as an adult. Then how much more children who have been conditioned from almost the womb, okay? Right from the womb, your mother was eating rubbish. Then you get, they get back to you. They started giving you formula from beginning. Because, trust me. Trust me. Formula is not as healthy as many of you think. Oh. That's why I try to encourage men to breastfeed, to, you know, breastfeed. And people be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Formula is not as healthy as you think. I mean, of course, your child will not die. Your child will, will, be, will survive. Your child will eat well. So, to many of us, me, I was formula fed, okay? Yeah, I was formula fed, right? But I remember reading the statistics one time that children who are formula fed have a higher chance of being obese in the future. Go and research it. 
go and research it. Children who are formula fed have a higher chance of being obese in the future because what is inside formula? There is high fructose, wanting, 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 all those they are corn syrup, corn, corn wanting, wanting. All those things are also in formula right again i'm not saying that if you formula feed your child you're a wicked mother or you don't have sex or whatever i'm not saying that okay because i mean what what will you do your child has to eat if your child is not breastfeeding right but again let's not fall back on it as if it's just something whatever it's just it's just formula no it's not just formula it is setting your child up for possible again i'm not saying that it's a must that every child that took formula must be obese in the future or must have future issues right i'm not saying that but there are people who have genetic dispositions to certain ailments that can become exacerbated or you know triggered by certain things that we eat and you don't know which of your children has it do you get my points now so that's basically my argument my argument is that we should be careful feeding our children these things give your children the best chance at you know the best outcomes by giving them the healthiest form of food when they are small so the healthiest form of you know uh, um, milk is breast milk obviously the healthiest form of um, um, food is real food real food that you made by yourself not all those packaged uh, peas and wanting wanting to tell you it's banana something something not all those things like actual food if you want to give your child um, mashed potatoes mash the potato yourself and give your child if you want to give your child um, you know some kind of cereal it's better for you to give your child pap that you made by yourself not even all those flavory pap that they used to make like make pap by yourself or buy homemade pap or you know natural pap and give your children reduce their chances of ending up like people like me <laughs> okay reduce their chances of that by giving them the healthiest form of food possible if you can okay again prayers are still very important God is protecting us. God is helping us. Okay, we will not give our children poison in Jesus' name. And whatever it is that we give our children that could be poisonous, I mean poisoning to their system, not that they will die or anything, but I mean like poisoning their system to be addicted to certain things or whatever. Whatever it is that we give our children, especially out of ignorance, our prayer is that it will not come to pass. Like our children will not be affected by those things. Okay, I believe that you know with prayer you can reverse some of the mistakes you made i i believe that one and i'm I, i'm praying for my children i'm reversing any mistake i made whether i knowingly or unknowingly i am reversing this right now you know through prayers okay that's why it's very important for you to be a praying mother okay but when you know when you are no longer ignorant when you have gained the knowledge do not open your eyes and set your children up for a life of struggle there are so many statistics and so many research on the current generation on you know why the current generation have so many things like all this ADHD autism and stuff like that including vaccinations okay I'm not I'm not anti-vaccination but I'm not pro vaccinations either I'm not jumping at the idea of vaccinating children either but you know I don't know which one to take and which one to take so I just I gave my children all the vaccines that they needed and I'm just using prayer to cancel whatever will cause issues right <laughs> So there's some research about you know cancer in children or in, in our generation, um, ADHD, autism, behavioral problems, neurodivergence, all those things, and they are linking all these things to food. It's almost like we go around and around, we check everywhere, check everywhere, and we still land back on on food again. We can't be too careful. I give mothers grace a lot. I feel like this conversation itself, we should be having it more with fathers because me, I try my best. Sometimes, see, eh, sometimes I go out, I get the most healthiest food ever to give my children and the next thing their father will come back with one pack of you know yogurt or pack of you know something i mean he has changed now because i've been talking to him about it but before it was almost like okay why are you undermining me <laughs> why are you undermining my efforts but he did not know either right so yes i give mothers a lot of grace because we are doing a lot and we are doing the best we can with the knowledge that we have right now okay but you know i'm just trying to nudge you guys in the right direction to actually do your research into all these things if you do your research and you feel like i beg, I beg what is that one that's nonsense talk i'll still give my child whatever i want to give my child then that's fine okay like i'm not saying you're a bad mother for that i'm just saying that if you are someone who is like me that has been wrestling with the idea of hmm i'm I doing the right thing for my child because i mean I, every time we're always me one thing i'm most worried about is hope i'm doing the right thing for my child hope i'm not setting them up for future issues hope i'm not going to give them <laughs> we'll get into that talk later on okay I won't, mine is not even mom guilt. I'm, I'm not calling. I won't, I, I won't refer to it as mom guilt, but I'll just refer to it as you know, mom hyper hyper sensitivity or hyper worry or whatever. I don't know what to call it, but whatever. But movies like 
hope I'm not setting my child up for emotional distress. So add prayers, add research, and just add efforts okay get people because without support without a good support system it's going to be very very difficult okay there are so many women who could not breastfeed not because they could not breastfeed but they, they didn't have that support system around them before you finish talking one or two your mother-in-law or your mother whoever is with you has already made one big bottle of formula and telling you just give the child this formula back why are you stressing yourself you can see that your breast is sore you can see that the child is crying you can see that you are not happy you can see that you've not slept is what is more important is for your child to eat and for, and for the child to be crying so just give the child okay so if you don't have that support around you it's going to be very difficult to do exclusive right if you don't have the support around you somebody who is helping you you know like prepare meals and stuff like that as a working mother as a busy mother it's going to be very difficult okay so my heart goes out to mothers i feel like we need more support than we usually get and that's why i always frown at women that will come and be making they talking about how uh, when Nigerian women are so lazy. I bet you can't sit down. <laughs> not even annoying me. And Nigerian women are so lazy every time. They, they, they can't do it without help. All mothers need help, okay? All mothers need help. It takes a village. Like, literally, it takes a village to raise a child well, okay? You can't do it by yourself. Trust me, you are not You are not all that. We all say, oh, mothers are special, yeah, whatever. You are not all that. You are not all knowing. You are not all powerful. You are not all, all, all seeing, okay? So, for you to take care of your children, you still need to rely on other people. You need to rely on your partner, you need to rely on your relatives, you need to rely on your friends to help, you know, raise that child well. So, if you have support system, educate your support system, okay? Educate them because sometimes you can finish doing, ah, I don't give my children that one. Then you send your child off to grandma's house for holiday and, your ch- and grandma will be giving the child <laughs> giving the child juice morning, afternoon and night, right? And to her, it's something, she loves her grandchild, she's giving her grandchild something that will make the grandchild happy. But, you know, she doesn't know that that thing is dangerous. Again, I'm not saying that you should just wake up now and say no juice no this no that like everybody you're only going to eat it's not it's going to be very difficult you'll be frustrated even you yourself will be frustrated okay so all i'm saying is if you are used to buying a pack of juice maybe you should not buy like me how i stopped it was even the other girl was telling me that she has, she has forgotten the taste of of ribena that ever since i stopped giving her ribena she has forgotten the taste that she doesn't even like it again and i was like yeah because when i, when I was in nigeria uh-uh, i remember then sophia now sophia will enter the store to where there's ribbon and finish three packs at once like in one seat like stand one, standing there she will finish drop the pack drop the pack drop the third pack uh-uh. and i now stopped buying it right like i was like no now it doesn't mean that i stopped them from taking it though if you go for a party and they give you you can drink if it comes in party pack you can drink but i stopped buying it and it stopped being a an everyday thing and even till now we stopped it so we don't have like juice or anything that is in the house that children drink every day we don't even have biscuits do they still eat biscuits yes once in a while if we go out to you know buy stuff i can buy biscuits i can buy chips i can buy stuff for them to eat you know to snack on right but it's not a regular everyday snacking thing and trust me they are not so attached to it like they used to be okay let's not even get into tabs and phones and all of that that's another topic for another day but basically anything that you know that is getting your child addicted that making your child you know and i can even draw parallels okay i can draw associations i can find correlation in here between usage usage of tabs and even junk food i can even find correlations between that okay because when the children are using a tab and they're just eating like you're just you're rewiring your child's brain to be addicted to different things you are rewiring their brain basically so just try reduce it if it's, if they used to take two juices a day let them take one if they used to take juice every weekend let them take it every month if they used to take juice to school every day and then come back and still take juice maybe reduce the one they take in school and when they come back home and they're frustrating you you can give them the one at home okay just just try okay just try and you know try and incorporate more healthy foods all these things i'm saying i'm talking to myself as well though. so don't come and think i'm coming to preach to you so not that tomorrow night you'll see me giving my chance something be like but you said eh. Hey, we are talking to each other we are talking to ourselves okay let me know your thoughts in the comment section i hope i was able to cover everything i wanted to cover but let me know your thoughts in the comment section what do you guys think about this topic are you guys worried as well because you guys are worried though it's like it like it just worries me i can't keep saying i don't have time i don't have time they are my children they are my precious <laughs> children they are they define me okay they are my identity right so i beg let me work on my identity <laughs> no but yeah they're my precious children and you know i'm not going to be i'm not going to be babying them forever they're not going to be small kids forever so now that they are little let me try my best and give them the best you know the best when it comes to food and stuff like that and you know training and teachings and stuff like that if they enter secondary school university and they decide to change oh no no wahala 
no wahala, you will not die, hmm? you will be fine, right? But let me know that it is not my my fault, it's not me that caused it. Eh? So by the time you are old enough to do whatever you want to do, if you want to wake up in the morning and have, you know, a, a five-tier wedding cake as breakfast, that's your own business, that's on you. But, you know, let's not be written anywhere that it was caused by me, okay? Anyway, that's it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you all in my next one. Bye!